Thanks for joining again today in Jesus' name. God bless you. Before we continue to this talk, let's pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name. We give you praise for giving us this wonderful privilege to be able to come together before your throne to learn of you and to hear from you. Lord, teach us your word in Jesus' name. Reveal your mind through this word, and I pray that nobody, O oh Lord, will be a hearer of this word alone, O oh Lord. There will be hearers and doers of your word in Jesus' name. The word will not be lost on any one of us. There will be a better for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. Blessed be your name, Allah, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray and we receive. Amen and amen. Once again, God bless you. Thanks uh, for remaining connected to us. Thanks for your love and thanks for watching us again in Jesus' name. So today the topic uh, we are considering is the damning effect of evil counsel. The damning effect of wrong counsel, the damning, that is the, the undeniable, the strong, or the destructive effect of wrong counsel. The Bible tells us clearly, when we look at the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 24, from verse 3, it says that true wisdom and house is builded, and by understanding it is established. That is true wisdom, true godly wisdom, a house is built. And through the understanding of God, it is established. One thing is to build something, another thing is for you to be able to stand the test of time. Proverbs 24, verse 3 says that true wisdom and house is builded, and by understanding it is established. Because we all know that it's not about building something, but also we need the grace and the understanding and the you know the ability to be able to maintain. That is what they mean by established, to maintain and retain whatever it is that we have built. And I pray that the Lord will give us understanding and will help each and every one of us, even as we listen to his word today in Jesus' name. We shall be looking at the scripture and look at, you know, the life of those that have gone ahead of us and we can be, so that we can relate it, so that we can relate it to our own life today. We need people. We need counsel. We need advice. We need people to walk alongside in, in our journey through life. But it is very important for us that as we look to people for counsel, as we look for, to people for advice, it is very important for us to be able to weigh the kind of counsel or advice or wisdom that we receive from people and be sure that is in line with the will of God, that is in line with you know, the word of God, that it will not make us to be able to go outside of the will of God for us and I pray that they will give us understanding. We shall be starting from the story of the family of King David. I'm reading from the book of Second Samuel chapter 13 from verse 1 to 17. I know it's a little bit lengthy, but there is so much for us to learn from here. We can see how destruction can enter into a family. We can see how problem can creep into a family due to wrong counsel. It is my prayer that the Lord will preserve you and I from every ungodly counsel, from every negative counsel, from every negative wisdom that, cannot, that might want to bring destruction and domination into our life or into our families in Jesus' name. I read from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 13, from verse 1. And it says that, And it came to pass. After this, the Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister, whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was the first son of David. David had many wives. According to the Bible, David had eight wives. So Amnon was the first. Absalom was the third son. So Tamar, Tamar is the daughter of David. Now, one of the, uh, the first son of David is speaking interest which we call an incest, it's an incest. He's picking interest in the, you know, he's showing, you can't call that love. He's showing infatuation towards his own sister. Though, from the different mother, but because you are still born of the same father, it is an incest for they don't have anything to do with that. But let's see what happened. And Hamnon, the son of David, loved her. And Hamnon was so vexed that he felt sick for his sister Tamar. What kind of love is that? For she was a virgin, and Hamnon thought it hard. For him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend. This is where the counsel came in. And Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemel, David's brother. So these are cousins. Are you seeing what is happening here? Amnon and Jonadab, they are cousins. Because Jonadab happened to be the son of David's brother, which is called Shemel. So let's see what happened. And Jonadab was a very subtle man subtle man was a very tricky man was a very deceptive man was it was a evil man if we can remember we see that the bible recorded that the serpent at the beginning 
the serpent was was regarded to be subtle also was deceptive was evil so the same thing was said concerning Jonadab and this is the person that Hamnon was working with. Hamnon himself had an evil intention, but he doesn't want to carry it out. So let's see what happened to them. And he said, verse 4 now, and he said unto him, Why art thou been, been the king's son, lame from day to day, without te not tell me? And Hamnon said unto him, I loved Tamar, my brother's, my brother Hassan's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when their father came to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother's Amnon's house, and dress him meat. The king did this out of his own ignorance. He never knew that such evil acts, such evil thoughts could be in the heart of any of his own children. But who knows? It might be because of the evil that King David himself had done in the past. I pray that the Lord will deliver from every evil past in Jesus' name. That evil will not turn out in Jesus' name. So, you can see now, he said, the king, David, ignorantly, sent for Tamar to come and go to Hamnon. Because they are siblings. He doesn't even know that anything could go wrong. Go there and dress in me and help your brother to make sure that he gets better. So, what happened? So, verse 8. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have out, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thy hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother, ignorantly. Ignorantly, verse 11. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do, do not thou this fully, and I wither shall I cause my shame to go. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not be told me from thee. So he's thinking, okay, if, if your plan is that you want to sleep with me, don't do this. It is evil. Why not just go ahead and talk to the king? If it's possible for the king to, you know, allow me to be married to you, which is still unlawful. It is, you know, it is incest. So he's trying to, the lady was trying to say how he can persuade the brother from doing the evil he planned to do. But the brother is not going to have it. Verse 14. How be it? He would not hearken unto her voice, but be stronger than she forced her and lay with her so she, the lady was raped then Amnon hated her exceedingly so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her he never loved her in the first place what was going on was lost what was going on was un ungodly you know desire un ungodly you know appetite towards the whole relation are you saying that there's no other woman in the land? Then maybe Hamnon wouldn't have done what he did. If not for the help of his counselor, which was Jonadab, the Hebrew counselor. And I pray today in the name of Jesus that the Lord will separate you and I from every Hebrew counselor that I want to derail our life and destiny in Jesus' name. Because if we read on, this matter eventually led to death. Let's read on and see. And Hamnon said unto her, her eyes be gone. And she said unto him, there is no cause. This evil is sending me away is greater. The, this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called a servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. So he used everything within his power to, to oppress his own sister, his own blood sister from the same father. That is what evil can do in the life of man. It make a person to lose all this reasoning, sense of reasoning, sense of you know, sense of reckoning. You don't, you don't think about anything. But just about what you are about to do. But like I said, maybe this man wouldn't have been able to do what he did. But because of the help of his counselor, the evil counselor, and I pray that the Lord will separate out from every evil counselor, every evil ungodly friendship. Now let's see the consequence of what happened. Because definitely King David became aware of the incident, because Tamar went crying to her house. And the brother, Absalom, was not happy. Let's see what happened. Second Samuel chapter 13. The destructive, the damning effect of evil counsel. 
what he can do in the life of a family or in the life of a person. I pray that the Lord will spare us from giving in Jesus' name. Second Samuel 13, from verse 13, 24 to 29. Second Samuel 13, 24 to 29. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold thou, thy servant hath cheap shearers. Let the king have beseech thee, and the servant go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he praised thee, albeit he will not, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us, because he has a plan. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom praised him, that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servant, saying, Mark ye now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have not I commanded you, be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. And then all the king's sons arose, and every man got in upon his moon and fled. So what happened here is that Absalom pretended when Tamar came to Absalom, and Absalom got to know what happened. Absalom pretended as if nothing happened. He said, don't, don't worry about it. Is it not your brother? Forget it. But Absalom was not happy. How can I be here? And my sister is being, you know, is being defiled. How can this evil come into our family and I will do nothing about it? He didn't say anything about it. The king himself, I don't know how he managed the affairs, but Absalom had a plan. Eventually, he orchestrated the plan in such a way that eventually Amnon was dead. And the king was not happy about it. Also, Absalom ran away from the king. And, you know, it caused a lot of rift, a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of problem in their family just because of the influence of wrong, wrong counsel. Maybe just because of the influence of wrong counsel, maybe even though Amnon himself had his own evil intent. But if Jonadab did not help him out, you know, did not give him the suggestion of what to do to carry out his evil. Maybe as time goes on, it's possible that Hamnon might have gotten over his loss and his desire and all that. Because you don't tell me that there's no other woman in the land. I pray that evil will not enter into our family. And I pray that even when he will knock on the door, we ourselves will not use our own hand to open onto it in Jesus' name. So we need to be careful. The people we surround ourselves with, we need people as we journey through life. It is very important for us to make sure that we are surrounded with people, that we are surrounded with people, that even when we are wrong, they are there to correct us. They are not there to help us. Because every one of us, we have our own lustful desires. That means that when, when, nobody should say that he's being tempted of God. But when a man is being tempted, it is when he's being driven away by his own desire, lustful desires. I pray the Lord will deliver from every lustful desire in Jesus' name. It happens. It happens among friendship. It happens among family. It happens among neighbors. It happens even in the church. And a, a desire will just come up. And it is our own responsibility also to be able to ask ourselves, when, when we are not seeing a desire, ask yourself, is this a godly desire? Is it an ungodly desire? Where will this desire end me? Where is it taking me? I pray that the Lord will give us understanding and give us the grace to be able to reign over our own desires. In Jesus, because God has given us that power. It is now left for us to, be able to exercise the power and the authority the Lord has given us. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So moving from there, we want to look also another story from, from the scripture concerning the story of the house of Isaac. Concerning the story of the life of Isaac and his family, his household. The same problem happened in their own family. But thank God that it did not lead to death. Let's read on from the book of Genesis chapter 27. I read from Genesis chapter 27 from verse 1. It says, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called his son, his elder son, and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold now, I am cold. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy gover, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take, my, and take me some venison. And make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son. Esau and Jacob, they are twins. Both of them, they are the children of this woman. So how can you be using one against the other? I pray that the Lord will give us understanding and give us wisdom. The Lord will give us wisdom to run our affairs and to run our homes and our relationship in Jesus' name. This woman was, you know, was the one that started problem in his own family. Even though God has said it, at the conception of the, the, you know, the, the twins, that one will be greater than the other, that the younger will be greater than the elder. God would not tell Rebecca to help him 
in carrying this out. God is able. When God promises, he's able to bring it to pass. Because God is not a man. He doesn't need our help. When he needs our help, he will tell us. But Rebecca decided to take the law into his own side, into her own hand, and decided to help God. We read on. She went. She read on. And Rebecca spoke unto Jacob her son, saying, from verse 6, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto you, so thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, before my, my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and flesh me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, and, he shall, and that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Even Jacob was being careful, what are you planning, mom? Behold, he saw my brother is an hairy man, and I am smooth. My father peradventure will feel me, and I shall be I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse. So this woman was ready to go all out to, to you know to bring about discord in his own family, to bring about you know problem that even she was not able to live to see the end of the problem she, she started because she died before because it, 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 the story got bad. That Jacob had to run away from home. They eventually succeeded. Jacob went ahead of the brother, brought the meat, the mother cooked it, went to the father, manipulated the father, and, they got, and Jacob got the blessing. But when Israel came back, if we read from, from the same chapter 27, from verse 41 to 45, because truly Jacob got the blessing. We don't need to go out of our way. We don't need to go you know, to do ungodly things, to receive blessing from God. God, when God says he will bless us, he will bless us. All we need to do is to align ourselves with the will of God. All we need to do is to be living in light, you know, of the word of God, to live in obedience with the will, to the word of God, to allow God daily to lead us by his spirit. And one day at a time, God will be holding our step and leading us one day at a time to his will and to his counsel for our life. And I feel that the Lord will give us understanding. I will not use our hand to start unnecessary problem. Because the Bible says that God... You know, it's no respect of person. But in this case, Rebecca respected one of his own children. He favored one over the other. She displayed favoritism, which is totally wrong. Which is between two. She had only two children, and she displayed favoritism to the end of the day. That Jacob ran out of home. I read from Genesis 27, from verse 41 to 45. And he saw, hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith. His father blessed him, and Jacob said in his heart, The days of money for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, as her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother to Hiram, and tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's who return away until thy brother's anger turn away from thee. And he forget that which thou hast done to him, then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I deprive, why should I be deprived also of you both in one day? So this woman was still going ahead, you know, she's a schemer on her own. She was going ahead thinking that she was she was doing the right thing. But unfortunately she was destroying her whole family. Thank God for the mercy of God. There was restoration. But by the time the restoration happened, this woman did not live to witness it. She did not believe to witness the restoration that eventually come. Because Esau was actually bent hell bent on killing the brother. But eventually, Jacob in Esau, Jacob while running away, met, he encountered God. Because God had a plan. You know, Jacob is Israel. Because God changed his name. He became Israel. We know that Israel like we are the people of God, we are the children of God. So God had a plan. God has an intention concerning the life of Jacob. But God does not need the mother to help. And this is to tell us as parents that we should be careful how we run our affairs. We should be careful how we deal with our children. When you have more than one child, when you have two, three children, we have to be careful. We are not displaying any form of favoritism among the children. It brings unnecessary discord. It brings unnecessary hatred. It brings unnecessary, you know, it brings lack of peace and harmony and joy in a family. I feel that the Lord will give us understanding. Because all the children, they have had, even if we think that one is not doing us, is not doing well as expected because they are our children it is still our responsibility to go ahead and be praying for that child 
It is our responsibility to go ahead and be praying for such, such, for, for such a child. And I pray that the Lord will help us. That none of our children, none of them, we, we serve one another. God will bless every of our children. That no one we serve the other in Jesus' name. Every one of them will be blessed of the Lord. Because God created them. And when God creates somebody or God created something, He created that person or something for a purpose. And I pray that the purpose of God in the life of every member of our families, whether we parents and the children, whoever, even in the life of our, uh, our the grandchildren, I pray that the purpose of God will be revealed and will be fulfilled in the life of everyone in Jesus' name. So we don't need to help God. It is unnecessary. This woman caused a problem, you know, and the family was, you know, was destroyed to some extent. They thank God for the mercy of God that restored the family. But when the restoration came, the woman was dead. In fact, it was part of the body of the love that he has for his younger son that, you know, she couldn't bear it. She died. I pray that God will give us peace in our old age. He will not leave our old age in pain, in regret, you know, in sorrow. But he will give us the grace to live our old age in peace and joy of heart in Jesus' name. Another story, we might not be able to read the length of the text, is the story of the children of Solomon. We can see that this thing passed from one generation to the other. So that means we have to be careful of how we run our affairs now. Because with the thing we do now, become a mystery tomorrow. If it's just a mystery, I pray that it doesn't have you know, a spiritual implication or effect upon our posterity, and that is upon our generations to come in Jesus' name. Concerning the story of Solomon also, because we all know that Solomon had many wives, but we recorded that he had 300 wives and 700 concubines. I, I, if I, I still find it difficult to come to terms with the kind of, you know, the, the kind of indiscipline, you know, marital indiscipline or sexual indiscipline that uh, Solomon displayed during his time. But we thank God for his life. At least we can learn from him. I pray that God will give us understanding and help us to be able to reign over our hearts, over our desires in Jesus' name. So we can see concerning the children of uh, Solomon also, Rehoboam and Jehoboam. You know, because he too he had many wives. So these children, they are from different mothers. But in this case now, Rehoboam, after Solomon died, was the one that was made the king. He was made the king so that he would be able to continue, you know, the, 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 you know, the work, what his father started to continue. But when this man, you know, started his reign, the people, the people that were working with the father, they came to him. He said, when we were working with your father, we had a lot of problems with your father. We had, you know, the, the, you know, the burden that we had from your father was too heavy for us. Can you please help us and make this body to be light? He said, okay, you come back the, the third day and I will do something about it. I will get back to you. What we can do to address this matter? When these people went, truly, Reuben doesn't know what to do. He needed counsel. There is nothing wrong with us seeking for advice. But we need to be careful. The kind of counsel we are receiving. And unlike the counsel, like I said initially, with the word of God. So this man went to the elders that were walking, you know, in the land and they were walking with the father before. He went to the elderly ones and they gave him advice that if, you, if they said your father had given them body that was too, why not make it lighter so that you'll be able to enjoy them walking with you so that they can be your servant. He said, okay, he heard them. He now went again to the younger generations, the people that grew up with him. He went to them and the counsel that these people gave him eventually led to him losing the throne. I pray that none of us will run. I pray that we will not run out of the will of God for our life in Jesus' name. So this man lost the throne of his father because of wrong counsel. Because the younger ones tell them, tell, told him, say, if they say that your father is doing this to them, then, then you do more, do far greater than that. Punish them and do this and do that. Eventually, when those people came back, when Jorobam, his brother, and the other people came back again, they told them, as he commanded them, or as he instructed them, as he instructed them. He told them that if my father, so he, 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 he addressed them according to the wrong counsel he received. And what happened after that? The people rebelled against him and eventually ran out of the place. And what happened? He lost the throne. His brother, now Jeroboam, eventually became the king. I pray that nobody will take our place in Jesus' name. But if you don't want anybody to take our place, we, too, we need God. We need to be guided and be led by God. And I pray that God will help every one of us. We will, we, will, we, will be, we will be mindful of the people around us. We will be mindful of the kind of counsel we are receiving from people. No matter where the counsel is coming from. First, we are aligning with the word of God. When somebody gives you a counsel, when somebody gives you advice, you don't need to apply it 100%. Take time. Ponder our points. Pray about it. Somebody brings a suggestion to you. There's nothing wrong with it. Because we, we don't know it all. We need people at times to, to, to relate with. We need people. We don't see beyond... You know, they say that we don't see beyond our nose. 
You understand? So people that see beyond, because maybe uh, you are the center of something, you cannot see far beyond where, you know, a, a particular stage or a particular point. You can trust people to help you and give you feedback. But while you are receiving all that, it is important for us to align all those things with the word of God. Take time to pray about these things, to know what to do. And I feel like the Lord will give us the grace to be able to wait and for us to be able to seek the face of God so that we will not destroy our own future, and not only our own future, our own life, but even the life of those that are coming behind us in Jesus' name. Because all these things, as a way of playing out in the life of those generations that are coming behind, God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. I read from the book of James, James chapter 1 from 5. It says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of, of God, that give it to all men, liberally, and upbraided not, and it shall be given him. So if anybody lack wisdom from you, you know that truly, I'm not too wise as I should be, or I need greater wisdom i need help ask of god seek is you know wisdom is of the lord any good thing that we, we we believe we need every good thing that we need in life is we can only get it from god ask god and he will release it upon you in jesus name wisdom how to run your family wisdom how to run your business wisdom how to run you your own personal life wisdom to run the, to run the work of, to do the work of god wisdom to do anything that the lord has committed to our hand all we need to do is to seek the face of god and he will guide us in jesus name and we will not go astray I read from uh, the book of Psalm 133 from verse 1. It said that, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, it is for family, it is for friends to dwell together in unity. And what is the result of that? If there's unity, if there's oneness, if there's no favoritism, if there's no, if there's no discrimination, if there's no, we don't allow the if we don't allow Satan to come in in between. He said it is the it is like a depression ointment upon the head that ran down upon the belt, upon Aaron's belt. That went down to the skirts of his garment. So what happened? As the dew of Haman, and as the dew, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For dear, this is the blessing of unity. This is the blessing of you know not allowing ungodly, you know, evil counsel, ungodly counsel to penetrate into our life or into our family to, to bring about destruction. If we allow unity and love and peace and cooperation, for dear the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. So the blessing of God comes upon a family upon a church, upon a business, upon a life, upon a neighborhood, upon, uh, upon anything. The blessing of God comes when there is unity. And I pray that the Lord will unite us in his love and in his spirit in Jesus' name. We need all these things. We need to know all these things and apply them so that we begin to see the blessing of the Lord manifesting and radiating upon our lives in Jesus' name. I read from the book of Psalm 1. Psalm 1, 1. Psalm 1, 1 says that blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sin and nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Here, where we're going is that blessed is the man. You and I were blessed. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So, if you are relying upon the ungodly counsel, if you are relying upon ungodly counsel to run your life, to run your affairs, then the person is not blessed. But I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I will experience the blessing of God as we seek godly counsel, as we seek, you know, people. That, that, that are operating in the fear and the counsel of the Lord himself. It is then that they, are, they will give us out of the abundance of the living water that is, that is flowing within them. They will be able to dish out some of them for us. And our life will take, you know, our life will go in the direction that the heaven desire in Jesus' name. I read from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 5. It says that, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So we don't allow our faith, we don't allow our understanding to rest you know, upon the wisdom of men, but in the wisdom of God. Amen? Wisdom of man, the Bible tells us that it's this foolishness unto God. But the wisdom that is acceptable in the sight of God, it is wisdom from above. And I pray that such wisdom, you and I will receive it today to the glory of the name of God in Jesus' name. So we don't rest our faith, we don't rest our life, we don't rest our family, we don't run our fears based on the wisdom of men. Like we said, if that is not to say that we don't seek the counsel of men, but I pray that the Lord will give us understanding what the mind of God is trying to reveal to us today in Jesus' name. Proverbs 23, Proverbs 24 from verse 3 says that true wisdom and house is builded, and by understanding it is established. A man, verse 5, a wise man is strong, yet a, a man of wisdom increases strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy work, and a multitude of counsels there is safety, a multitude of godly counsel. A multitude of the right counsel, godly counsel, then there is safety. And I pray that you and I will find safety in Jesus' name. And so Psalm 16 11 says that thou shalt show me the path of life. If we rely upon the wisdom of God, we rely upon the Spirit of God, it will show us the wisdom of life. And I read lastly, it says that an ungodly man, they get up evil. 
in his lips, in his lips, there is a burning fire. So do not associate yourself with ungodly people. Because Bible is telling us that they did get up into evil. Ungodly counsel will bring about evil into one's life and into one's family. And I pray that, that will not be our own testimony in Jesus' name. Because in his lips, there is a burning fire. In his lips, lips instead of life, godly counsel brings life. It brings direction. It brings hope. It brings clarity. But ungodly counsel brings fire. It brings destruction. And I pray that our life will not be destroyed. Pray with return believer. Be careful. That is not to say we don't live with them. Be careful the kind of counsel and advice we receive from them. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. If anybody is watching me, you have listened to this word, what the mind of God is revealing to us today, and you don't get understanding of what we're saying. It's because you don't have the Spirit of God in you. Or if you are listening to me, you say, oh, I, 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 I don't have godly people around me. You need God because God chose our friend for us. You know, God himself chose our friends for us with his spirit and with his help. With his help. And I pray that the Lord will give you understanding. If you want to give your life to Jesus, all you need to do is to acknowledge that you're a sinner. And say this prayer after me. Ask for the forgiveness of your sin and the Lord will forgive you. Close your eyes and let us pray. Say, dear Lord, acknowledge that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of all my unrighteousness and give me the grace to sin no more. Write my name in the book of life and help me to follow you from now till I see you face to face in heaven. Thank you for answering my prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And we are still praying, dear Lord, I commit your sons and daughters. Many have acknowledged their sin and I've asked you to come into their life as their Lord and Savior. Lord, according to your promise, accept them, write their name in the book, write their name in the book of life and give them the grace to sin no more. When the rules have been called up, Lord, let each and every one of these ones, including us also, that have already said, give us the grace, O Lord, to reign with you forever in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And for as many of us have received this word today, the grace for us to be able to, to, to follow the path of life that the Christ has come to show us is the way, is the truth, and is the life. Help us to follow Christ. And as we follow the Lord, I pray that we will continue to walk in the path of life, we will not walk in the path of destruction, and have the grace for us to be able to dissociate ourselves from every evil counselor, every destructive, ungodly counselors that might come into our life to bring about destruction, that come into our life to derail our path, that come into our life to cause shame and to cause sorrow, perpetual sorrow. I pray that the grace for us to be able to dissociate ourselves from such ones, give unto every one of us that heard the word today in Jesus' name. And as we follow you, I pray that the grace for us to live in peace and the joy of heart and the fulfillment, we and our house, we pray that heaven will release upon every one of us today in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer prayer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have just given your life to Jesus, I rejoice with you. I encourage you that the Spirit of God that is now dwelling inside of you. God. So the power of God is now living inside of you. You are now a son and a daughter of God. So I, I rejoice with you and I encourage you that you find time, you make time, out of no time, out of busy schedule, and make time to go in your newfound faith. Take time to study the word of God and the spirit of God will reveal the mind of God to you through his word in Jesus. I also encourage you that the spirit of God will lead you to a Bible-believing church where you'll be able to learn the word of God, you'll be able to fellowship with other sons and daughters of God so that they will be able to encourage you to grow the more. And I encourage you also to join us here, to be, you know, to join us here, check our other videos, you'll see a lot of materials that can help you to grow in the understanding of God. And I pray that the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And it is my prayer that when the roads are being called up, Lord, that none of us will be found wanting in Jesus' name. God bless you. Once again, God bless you. Thanks for being a part of today's video. I hope you've been blessed. If you have been blessed, like the video, comment below, and uh, share the video to be a blessing to somebody. And if this is your first time of watching this channel, I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're in the right place. You're in the midst of the sons and daughters of God. And I pray that as you have joined us today, your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. I encourage you, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please encourage us to subscribe to the channel. Uh, share what the Lord is doing in our midst with others, and as you do that, the Lord will bless you in return in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Remember that we love you, but Jesus loves you more. God bless you. Bye for now.